back with another review video this time. Um, this is the 2013 Boss 302, and in my opinion, the only color you should get a Boss 302 in, school bus yellow. Uh, the Boss 302 was basically a road racing version of the Mustang, and it was originally released in 1969, and then was also made in 1970. In 2012 and 2013, Ford reproduced the cars as sort of an homage to the originals. So uh, the 2013, which I'm driving now, has the same stripe pattern as the 1970 of the time. What's special about that color is you can only get school bus yellow with the Boss 302. This one can actually rub out to about 78 or 7900 RPMs, which is just insane for an actually aspirated V8. It's such a different experience revving a car like this out to that RPM, and it's loads of fun when you do it. So, that being said, we're gonna go ahead and do a poll here.
like this, you're not really looking for interior bits and pieces to make you happy. This car also has sync, which was an option at the time, and because of that you get the steering wheel controls and all those little fun bells and whistles. But uh, overall, this car is basically the perfect Boss 302 that you could want from 2013. It's the right color, it's got every option. As far as resale value goes, you're really not going to find anything that beats this specific spec, which is really cool. Whenever they purchase these cars secondhand, a lot of people don't realize that you can get the track key still, which completely changes the character of this car. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead, pull over, and swap keys, and then we'll continue with the review. So while I'm sitting here waiting for the track key idle to enable, uh, Kyle gave me a list of, I guess, fun facts you could call them that I can read off about the car. So uh, it has... <laughs> So I talked about how the engine's different. So this is called the Roadrunner engine. The reason it's called that is because uh, a Roadrunner is faster than a Coyote. That's a fun fact. Um, it has a forged rotating assembly, so pistons, rods, and crankshaft are all forged. Uh, port and polished heads with titanium valves. High capacity baffled oil pan, low resistance alternator. Engine oil cooler, racing radiator. It has the, I guess, esteemed Boss 302 intake manifold that so many people swap into their cars. Uh, something special about this one is it has the number of the car on it. That's how you can tell a real intake manifold from a false one. Uh, fun fact for you there. This car does have the Torsen package with the floor mats. The only option it doesn't have is the fog lights where the brake duct should be. And other than that, that's about it as far as specs of the car go. Another fun fact is that the only difference between this uh, street version of the Boss 302 and the race car version of the Boss 302 is the oil pan, which I didn't know. That's a fun fact that Kyle told me. So, here's the mods Kyle has before we take off. Just get these out of the way before I start driving with the track key. Um, it has a heartthrob muffler delete with 4-inch chrome tips that he welded on, Laguna Seca transmission cooling scoop, Peterson oil separator, polished engine bay with removed heat shielding and sound deadening, FIA spec fire extinguisher mounted to the passenger seat, which is another thing he did to the interior that I did not mention before. It's got a rear seat delete, a gutted trunk, GT500 13.8 inch rear brake upgrade, which he just did. Um, I haven't really got on the brakes yet, but I'm anxious to see how they feel. Uh, it's got a, it's got front and rear centric racing rotors, which like I said, haven't really got a chance to feel those yet, but they feel pretty good so far. G-Lock R6 pads, as well as uh, NGK racing spark plugs. The engine runs great, the car runs great, and it's just awesome. So, um, some things I also missed on the exterior. It has, the tires in the front are 255 and 285 from the factory staggered, and it also has the black spoiler and the same rear badge as a V6. So if anybody ever gives you trouble for your Boss 302 from behind, and they think it's a V6, show them who's boss. I promise I didn't mean for that to be. Let's go. Alright, so I just got the notification that the track key idle is enabled, so we'll go ahead and stop so we can hear it. Sounds good. So, I've heard Kyle use this line a lot, but the track key changes 300 engine parameters and it affects things like engine braking and a bunch of stuff like that. The engine braking difference is insane.
traction control on is just constantly nudging you like, are you, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure? I feel like I should stop you. Um, so in my case, that's kind of a novice to this car. It's good that it's there. So like I mentioned, this Boss Theater 2 is non-stock. It's got quite a bit done to it. Um, so it performs a little bit better, but it maintains the factory feel, I guess you could say, since not much has been tampered with. Everything he's done is tasteful and improves the car in its own specific way. Downshifts in this car are easy. The clutch feels great. The gas is touchy, but it's not too touchy. You can just barely blip it and get the perfect downshift just about every time. That's the thing. It's still a Mustang at the end of the day. Um, but it's, it's a whole different animal. Kyle and I were talking earlier, and between my Mustang and his, they feel completely different. They're both fun cars, but in what they were built to do, they both do a great job, respectively. Mine's more of a Grand Tour. This is a race car for the street. And the track, too. Honestly, it does a great job. Really going to get hard on the brakes here.